Hello friends, this is Jasu Bakuhatsu, and welcome back to Let's Play Azure Dreams. So yeah, where we last left off, I uh, can't actually remember exactly where we were, but that'll uh, be apparent in a moment. We were on, yes, continuing our quest from the fifth floor. And I believe our familiar had just been knocked out, so we're going to go it. Or no, he wasn't knocked out, he ran out of mana. So yeah, we're going to be going it solo from here on out up to hopefully floor 12 if we can make it that far oh yeah i guess that <laughs> i guess the transition isn't as apparent because you know there is we switched to a there's like a transition from one video to another uh between this floor and the previous one but uh yeah if you rem if you rem if you guys remember the background music uh from the previous video you can tell that it's actually uh changed here on this floor so yeah actually yeah you get different background music uh, every five floors up the tower and although weirdly enough like the kind of the graphics set like the scenery the way that each, the, the way that the floors look also changes um, every few floors but it's not every five floors which is a bit strange you'd think they'd want to like I don't know line those up for some reason or another I don't know but anyways yeah the the floor graphics change a bit more frequently, so, something like once every three or four floors, and then the music changes every five. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, Just they're just like lining up, they're, they're just coming to me to die, that's all that's going on here, although with that said, at the rate, if they don't stop coming in soon, I'm actually going to end up dying eventually, because I am not getting enough, enough time to refill my health here. Oh god, and there's another one. Good grief. Okay, it's just a just a little flame knight. Those guys were dangerous, you know, a few floors ago when they were just showing up. But by this point, yeah, no problem. Oh, God. <laughs> this is actually get becoming um, a bit scary. So, yeah, um, I didn't actually get around to mentioning this. But, okay, so what's the whole point of going up the tower? What, you, what can you actually do apart from just getting to the top? Well, the way that you get... The way that you get out of the tower with all of your items intact and actually, you know, make money to buy all of that stuff in town that I was showing off before, you know, the buildings and... Actually, I guess it's mainly just the buildings, but uh, anyways, yeah, so the way that you actually make money in this game is you've got to escape from the tower without dying. And the way you do that is there's an item... Or have we collected one yet? I haven't really... Okay, we don't have one yet. There's an item called the Wind Crystal, which is essentially your escape wire or your Ariadne thread or whatever you want to call it, your your get back to town item. And are we really full already? My goodness. Okay, so here we actually have to start making some choices. Or actually, you know what? I forgot that we had the pita fruit there, so we actually could we actually could bring out our familiar for just a couple more floors and get him some experience. And I've got a because, you know, I, I said that he's not going to be terribly useful once we get up, I think it's, yeah, up around floor six or seven or so, where we start seeing a bunch of water enemies that are... Oh, that stupid mistake with the spaces, just... Okay, we're going to have to fix that as soon as we get back to town. But anyways, yeah, uh, so even though I said, like, it's not essential to level this guy up, uh, like, he's not going to help us for this particular run since he's not going to survive to the 12th floor anyways. Um, it's still kind of useful in the long term just to have, uh, get some good levels on him just to make sure that he, uh, like, like I said before, we're going to want to replace him as soon as possible with a better monster. But in the event that that, in, in the event that we don't find a better monster anytime soon, we might end up, because yeah, monster eggs are quite rare. It's only, like, I don't even know how exact if I could even say how often you see them on average I find that it's like typically at best like maybe once every like eight to ten floors you might see a monster egg and some runs you might go like 20 floors and it's like there's a lot of vi variants there so sometimes you might go like 15 or 20 floors without seeing any monster eggs at all um oh looks like he uncovered a trap for us and the wind seed, those are actually not terribly useful. They're situationally useful, but, uh... Or in fact, so do we have any of those in our inventory? Because, or though with that said, actually, the wind seed is much more useful than the sea seed, so it actually makes sense to... So, oh wait, except we wanted the truth glasses first, of course, so... Um, minus one scorch... Okay, copper, copper sword isn't worth garbage for resale value, so... Get rid of that. 
But uh, anyways, yeah. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, it might be a while before we're act we actually find a suitable... Oh, I forgot to do my little AI manipulation there, so... Cyclone gets a free hit on Baku, which is fine. Cyclone's a wind type, so ba honestly, Baku could solo that guy. No problem, most likely. Oh, but oh, these guys. These guys are water types. These, are, these aren't... Yeah, these uh, may no, yeah, these sort of dividing Manova guys aren't really the difficult water monsters I was talking about, but as you can see, yeah, there it does six damage there. Got like 32 H HP, so this guy gets a decent bit of damage, but we'll be seeing some even stronger monsters in the next few floors. But uh, yeah, any anyways, um, b basically, yeah, the more I level up my starting familiar, the basically the faster I'll be able to progress up through the tower on future runs and you know the hot as once basically I want to try to get you know get him up in levels so I can progress to the high even higher than floor 12 on future runs and start getting some of those really good monsters because yeah you basically can't really and yeah even if you do find like a monster egg on like the first five six floors or so you don't really start to see like the really good monsters until like like about about, about like or actually that's not actually even true that about starting about on floor seven, there is a particular... I think it's floor seven or eight. You get it. There's a particular good monster, that egg, that you can find on those floors. But after that, uh, yeah, you typically don't start seeing the really good monsters until, like, floor 15 or 16 or so. So, yeah, for that reason, definitely want to be leveling up Baku wherever we can. Just to make sure that he gets some experience to actually carry us up to those levels. Um... Oh right, I was I was talking about uh, yeah the <laughs> yeah the so let's or have we actually gotten any better equipment now? No, we're still stuck with the copper sword and the diamond shield, which is really good. So I was talking. Oh, there's the yeah the whatever. I, I think that's the upheaval trap. Actually, it's more more often it's those that the, the, those elevation changing traps are actually more helpful than harmful a lot of the time, just because enemies are. You can use the change in elevation to actually give yourself an advantage. Whereas, yeah, enemy monsters are obviously too stupid to really take advantage of that, so... Uh, speaking of which... So yeah, anyways, uh, we're kind of in a precarious situation until we can... Like, it's great that we found the diamond shield and all that, but uh, that's not actually going to do anything for us. Unless we can find a wind crystal to escape with it. And okay, so yeah, there's uh, rust traps around the tower. So one strategy you can have, you can see we have uh, in our inventory this white sand. So what that does is, there's there's three different kinds of sands. There's the white sand, which improves, basically, basically gives you extra spell charges on your spell balls. And uh, that's that's a dumb phrase. Let's call them orbs. Let's call them spell orbs. <laughs> Um, anyways, yeah, it gives you extra... Basically, you can use white sands on those to refill your charges on a given spell. And also, there's red sands, which improve the strength of your weapon, and blue sands, which improve the, improve the strength of your shield. So, one, one valid strategy, like I mentioned how one strategy you can use to get... to just power level your way to the top floor is to just level your familiar up a bunch of times through the tower. Uh, the other way... Uh, Slightly less reliable because, but uh, you can uh, basically you can just amass a big collection of sands and put them in your just escape the tower with a bunch of sands. Try to collect as many as you can, and then just uh, take them all, just use them all at once, and then create for yourself like this big uber weapon that, and then you or this you know uber sword and uber shield with a bunch of sands stacked on top of it, and then use that to carry you to the end of the game. Uh, the, the, the danger with that, though, is if you do end up, if you do die uh, without getting a wind crystal, you do you lose all the items that you came into the tower with. So if you die with like your, you know, your plus eleven gold sword equipped, then you'll lose that sword forever, and all of those sands that you put into it are gone forever. But that's that being said, there that's another way. But the problem, the reason that isn't really a viable strategy, though, is again because of those rust traps, which uh, degrade your equipment and give them like a minus one each time you step in one of those. And uh, rust traps are fairly common, more common than sands actually. So it becomes basically impossible to power level your equipment in that way, unless 
you get a set of rust-proof equipment, which is a, a, a what all that I was talk, re, re, uh, referring to earlier is that the diamond shield is one of one of two rust-proof shields in this game. So yeah, that's that's the reason why I was saying that uh, this is yeah end game quality equipment right here. We could, if we want to, we can just uh, stick this diamond shield in our vault back home. And then just uh, save up a bunch of blue sands to power it up to obscene levels, and then just uh, basically abuse that to beat the game. And then uh, likewise with swords, I think uh, I think the gold sword is the only sword in the game, or the, I'm actually not sure. Gold sword is usually the it's the only gold the gold sword is the most easily findable, the like the least rare. Uh, rust-proof sword in the game, so that's the one I typically use uh, to sort of train up my endgame sword, which is uh, a bit of a tougher one. Like I said, the diamond shield is one of the best shields in the game, even even without considering its uh, rust-proofness. Like, uh, it's got it's got seven defense by default, which is, I believe, the highest in the game for any common shield. Oh yeah, and uh, your other your other option for rust-proof shields, which is actually a, a viable one, it has the mirror shield, which uh, has slightly lower defense. I believe it's three defense on the mirror shield, but uh, it makes you immune to magic. It actually reflects magic back at enemies, which can actually be extremely useful on some of the later floors where enemies start tossing uh, really powerful magic spells at you. But uh, it, it's not incredibly useful or anything, and uh, I might as well just head up there now. So anyways, like I said, I'm going to be doing a little bit of level grinding uh, this run, much more than usual, in fact. Uh, future runs will go much more smoothly, but... Anyways, uh, like I said, the mirror... The mirror sh or like I, yeah, well, I, like I was saying, the mirror shield is not like... It, that sounds really good, but actually, spellcasting enemies aren't that super common. There's like a couple enemies in the game that have some really nasty spells they can throw at you, but for the most part, uh, Light Seed is useless. But uh, for the most part, it's going to be like the enemy's just basic attacks that are really going to do you in. What does this thing do again? And will not decrease. Okay, might as well just use that now. Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> Those stupid spaces. Have... Okay, so this is uh, not, not like an uber... Okay, yeah, yeah, so you can see he's got the brainwashing skill there. That actually doesn't work on Baku here. Your default familiar is brainwash proof. So uh, that's a good thing, but uh, once we replace him, it's it's actually kind of annoying if you get if you uh, get unlucky on the early floors. If you come here with like one of the stronger monsters, uh, you can actually it can actually your strong monster can end up backfiring on you if you get like a like a level twenty monster here that ends up getting brainwashed. It can it can kill you down here because of course you'll your level resets so you can you'll just get one shot by your own monster. It's really rare for that to happen though. Uh, like, yeah, I, th I think that the high-level monsters have, like, a... I, th I think the success rate of these spells is uh, based on the level difference between the two monsters. So it's, like, really, really uncommon for that to happen. But anyways, those plant dudes are a water type, so those are actually going to do a lot of damage to Baku here. Which is a bit of a shame. So, yeah, basically, the, uh, those, and yeah, as you can, okay, he's actually starting to lose. Uh, Scarlet Wand, that's actually not bad. I can't remember if wands sell for a lot in town or not. Um, okay, do we have anything? Might as well use the exit loop. It's not a terribly useful one, so we might as well just use it now. And then I think, I think the Scarlet Wand might be... It, or if if Baku survives up to level seven or eight or so, that uh, might end up becoming situationally. Oh no! Get over here! What are you doing? Oh, you moron! No, don't attack from downhill, you dumbass! Oh wow! Speaking of dumbasses, what is? Where is that monster going? Whatever. I don't want to. Okay, we got a little bit of a train going here. I would like to lead these guys back to some kind of elevation point some kind of high ground to attack from, but it doesn't look like that's going to work, so... Yeah, we'll just go here. Oh, and actually, what I can do now, just for fun, uh, is, yeah, I can show off that uh, spell that uh, I didn't get a chance to... There we go, so go in direct grid, wait a turn, and he's going to throw a fireball. Oh, and that actually one-shots him, and also, oh, also takes out my familiar. Oh, uh, do I have anything else to feed him? 
doesn't look like it, so... Okay, so I guess he's just gonna go back in the bag, which is fine. I'm actually really su or I guess I've been playing kind of stupidly aggressive with him. I really should have gone with the mixture magic a bit more. And incidentally, so the difference between wands and swords is that wa wands will always have an attack power of one. But on the other hand, uh, the benefit of wands is that they strengthen uh, the mixture magic of your familiar. And the elemental wands will deal even more damage uh, for spells of that particular element. So that scarlet wand would like basically give me like a super powered fire attack. Yeah, whenever I use the mixture magic with Baku, who is now unconscious anyway, so that was ended up being kind of a pointless pointless find in the end, but who knows, maybe we'll find a pita fruit lying around somewhere and we'll be able to get a little bit more mileage out of our little pet. Um, but yeah, for now it's uh, just kind of a lot of, not a whole lot of level grinding, but you know, a little bit. Actually, might as well go to the high ground here, just to avoid taking. And so, uh, actually, when I, so you'll notice that we're recovering HP just by walking around, and that's actually quite, you actually get, it, it recovers at a pretty fast rate on the lower floors when you don't have, when enemies don't do a lot of damage and you don't have a lot of max HP, but um, yeah, once you get up to the higher floors, your natural HP recovery uh, becomes a lot less effective, just because, you know, instead of it's like, yeah, recovering that one HP every few steps isn't as significant when you have, like, 120 HP and enemies are dealing, like, 30 damage to you a shot. So, yeah, your your natural regeneration actually is actually really, uh, really helps to sustain you on these lower floors, but uh, basically becomes useless once you start hitting around floor 20 or so. Incidentally, there are 40 floors to the tower, so yeah, if I haven't mentioned that before, that's the ultimate end goal, is to get up to floor number 40 here. So it looks like we've yeah, managed to explore the whole floor, so now that's, that's basically going to be our the goal for each floor uh, going forward, is to just... Yeah, basically explore everywhere, try to see if there are any good items we can find, and then after that, uh, basically just sit at the exit and farm enemies until the floor collapses. And yeah, I believe we're on, what, floor six or seven here? So I believe we're like halfway there. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, let's just sit here so that half the enemies we encounter will give us that nice little elevation bonus. Oh, this is bad. Actually, it's not too bad. I think I'll kill this guy in two hits and... Yep, just like that. No problem. Or actually, I wonder... I wonder if this will work. Okay, I can't lift the Minovas. I was wondering if I could just pick them up and set them down. Just kind of throw them off the hill, but... There are there are some enemies that you can throw, and actually you'd, be, you'd sometimes be surprised at some of the enemies that you can just pick up and throw. That's always, always just the most amusing thing I find when I'm having... When, especially when I was kind of first going through this game and learning kind of the behaviors and just how to deal with all the all the different enemies. It was I was kind of it was it was always just very amusing. I found when I'd be like having a lot of trouble with a particular type of enemy, and then eventually I, I just thinking I wonder if I can pick up this guy and throw him, and that just basically totally declaws them because anytime you get like this, for example, there's an there's a griff griffin enemy we'll find on like floor ten or so. Which are like really powerful dudes, and they have like a really nasty fire spell as well. But uh, you can pick them up and throw them. So anytime a griffin gets up in your face, you can just like pick them up and toss them away, and you just never have any. Like there's a there's a failure chance, so it might not, it, it won't necessarily work a hundred percent of the time. But really, it really, it, it's just a thing to you know, just a thing to keep in mind to try out. It really declaws some of those really annoying enemies you can find. Although, with that said, on the, like, the really high floors, basically nothing is throwable. Like, yeah, you can't throw dragons, you can't throw, like, the max... I forget what they're called, like, the Maximus... whatever, Maximum... Basically, this these, like, giant, like, eldritch horrors that deal, like, a billion damage. Those kinds of enemies you can't throw, but... So, yeah. <laughs> I guess that kind of concludes the Azure... You know the Azure Dreams basics, really, and so I was I was kind of anticipating that there'd be a lot of downtime 
with this LP where I just have a lot of time to, you know, just, just fill talking about nonsense and stuff unrelated to the game. Because, you know, it's an RPG, that's just... <laughs> you're not gonna be... There's just not enough to talk about to fill all of the time in these kinds of games, really. Although, with that said, um, actually, oh right, no, yeah, I got finished talking about uh, the whole sand rust trap thing. Okay, actually, one, one last thing. Um, I guess I could go through the items in the in... Eh, nah, there's no point. That would just be boring if I just go through all the items in my inventory. I can describe what they do once they become useful. Man, I, I could really go for, like, a sword upgrade right now, because there's some enemies coming up on the next couple floors that I would really like to be able to dispatch quickly. I would not like to let some of the guys coming up get too many hits on me. And if, in fact, that might actually end up being a sticking point. If I don't find a better sword soon, I might end up having to start basically ex rushing for the exits uh, sooner than I wanted to. But uh, anyways, actually, it's kind of a... Kind of... Uh, it's kind of a weird story how I, like, got... It's not really much of a story, just that the first time I ever heard about this game and got kind of interested, there was actually an ad for this game in the back of... I think it was the manual for Vandal Hearts, which is another Konami PS1 game. That one's, uh, that one's a tactical uh, or a strategy RPG. And, yeah, there was an ad in the back of the manual for, like, this game called Azure Dreams, and it, it had a bunch of, like, screenshots in it for, like... It was mostly, like you know, the tower, like the dungeon crawling gameplay, like this kind of gameplay you're seeing here, were the kinds of screenshots they showed in the back of the manual there. And it was just based on the, like, you know, the, the kind of overhead, that overhead diagonal perspective kind of misled me into thinking that this would be another, another strategy RPG, like, you know, games like Vandal Hearts and Final Fantasy Tactics, which I was really into at the time. So I was like, oh, there's this new... There's like this tactics RPG, uh, Azure Dreams, made by the same guys who made Vandal Hearts, which was one of my favorite games at the time, back in the kind of early PS1 days. And so... Ooh, Steel Sword, that's an improvement. So, okay. So, Scarlet, or no, the uh, Copper Sword can screw off. And um, actually, I think the Steel Sword isn't that much better. It's like, ah, uh, it's four, four attack, better than two. So, okay, nice, we got our sword upgrade. That's actually going to help a fair bit. I think that, yeah, it might save us from getting hit, like, once by the submarines that are coming up, or whatever they're called. Because, yeah, there's... <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I won't spoil it. There's some really nasty enemies coming up. I guess if not on this... Surprised we haven't seen any yet. I guess it must be on the next floor. But uh, anyways, yeah, so I was uh, expecting this to be like a tactics game, like uh, like Vandal Hearts, just based on the screenshots, and particularly just based on the camera perspective and the screenshots. Actually, I can actually... So I think what I want to do is to start building up... Come on, get... Okay, there. I guess I just didn't press X hard enough or something. Okay, so I think I... Get out of the way, you're sitting on your food. So I, what I think I want to do here is actually just every time I find a, one of these useless little herbs, I can just give them to my familiar. And then I, I and yeah, you can see that made him gain like three MP, which is like nothing. It's not going to do anything for us, but it, just little by little, we can kind of get him back in the game here. Because yeah, if we, if we can just find like, yeah, maybe five or six of those little useless herbs, we can maybe get him back in business for if we're, we ever come across an emergency where he's needed. Anyways, uh, without a, yeah, so yeah, back to this, yeah, first experience with this game. So I was actually really disappointed when I like actually played the game and found out what it was. It's like, oh, this is like a tactics RPG where I control one character. It's like that's like nonsense. What's even the point of it? And I like I lose. This is my first experience with like a uh, any type of roguelike game as well. So like the whole concept of like, wait, so I level up my character and then I just lose all my levels anyways. Ooh, a leva fruit is that? Um. Oh, okay, that's a useless fruit, but okay, again, we can get Baku out and feed it to him. Although, I don't know if he'll actually eat it, because, yeah, uh, he can't... Your Yeah, your first familiar can't actually... Yep, he refuses to eat it, <laughs> because, yeah, it literally does nothing to him, because uh, he cannot... He, yeah, basically, he always maintains his, his form during fusion... 
uh, because, you know, he's the default. He he's kind of becomes plot relevant uh, near the end of the game, so you can't you can't ever get rid of him for any reason. He'll ref he'll refuse the Olean fruit for the same reason, I believe. Okay, so Scarlet Wand, another one of those. Don't I really can't remember whether wands are considered valuable or not, or which wands are considered valuable. Like I I know that the rare wands, like the money wand, sells for a lot, but. Anyways, I was, yeah, this was, this game was kind of my first experience with, like, the whole roguelike thing, and all, all of the different elements of it just seemed, like, really, really strange to me. I just, like, yeah, this whole notion of, like, an RPG where I level up my character, but I lose my levels anyways, like, what's even the point of that? And then, but then, on the other hand, it, 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 and actually it was really those other elements of the game that I was talking about, like, you know, the sort of monster-raising Pokemon-esque aspect, like, I was big in, I was big into Pokemon back, uh, during those days. So yeah, the whole monster collection thing uh, really appealed to me. Um, uh, okay, this might be TM TMI for you guys, but uh, the whole dating sim aspect appealed to me as well. I was actually kind of getting into those games as well at about that time. Don't worry, I won't bother you with the details. But yeah, I played a fair number of dating sims on the PC back in those days, so that aspect of the game appealed to me. Uh, the town building stuff, I guess I could, uh, you could say I could take it or leave it, but, uh, you know, it, it's just all those things just kind of come together to really kind of make this game more than the sum of its parts. Like the, like uh, I mentioned, uh, there's some cool and interesting things you can do with, uh, with, with the whole uh, grabbing and throwing items system in this game. Oh, there, there it is. There's the bugger. Oh, God. I actually don't even think I want to fight this guy without an oh, and especially yeah, if I if I fight that thing right after fighting these guys, I'm gonna die. So let's let's get out of here. Oh, there there we go. Got to get some height advantage. It's weird that we're only encountering that now. I wonder if maybe they're just rarer on the lower floors, or maybe if they only appear once you hit a certain level. What's our map coverage like, anyways? Oh, it looks. Uh, actually, it looks like there's there's a good chance that there's another room in that bottom corner there, so we'll just go check it out. Even if it means going have to, having to fight that little periscope bastard.